Hello, my Food Mood friends. Welcome, Chandra Zas, Zen Odyssey, Food Mood Coaching. I have a very special treat for you this week. I'm just doing an introduction right now for a testimonial video where I interview one of my past clients, Britta, and she shares her journey, her before and after, what she struggled with around food and emotions, and what came out of our coaching time together. I am really honored and grateful to share this interview with you. So enjoy. Welcome. Here is your hostess and coach, Chandra Zas, helping people make food and mood changes doable without missing out. Go ahead, high five that like button, subscribe and share while you're there. Welcome. Thank you, Britta, so much for being here and doing this awesome favor for me. Deeply appreciated. Oh. I'll do a quick introduction. Um, Britt and I actually went to coaching school together. I totally fell in love with her and pursued a friendship. <laughs> and we did some um, coach trades. And then so a couple of years down the road, Britta reached out to me and said, I want to hire you as my food coach. And then we embarked on that journey. And then we actually got to meet in person at Burning Man in the middle of that program, which was also actually something that I'd really want to give my clients is that in-person eating together aspect, because you've shared with me that that was very impactful. And I know it is to like actually eat and feel the food. And then we are also um, co-collaborating in a multi-author book together right now that is going to be coming out right now. We're recording this in May of 2024 and the book is being published in the next like month. So she's also a co-author in this exciting book. She, in her own right, is an epic coach, and she works with women considering divorce and and is also dabbling in the soul-led lifestyle, which we have a lot of like friend chats about, which is definitely part of our journey. And I want to thank you for agreeing to do this testimonial for me and share what your experience was like being a client of mine and working on your food stuff um, with me and in my food and mood coaching program. Before I ask questions, do you want to say something or? I'm so here for this, like really excited. I love hearing you just remind me of some of the pieces of our journey. And I do want to say, I feel very lucky that because of the closeness of our relationship, we, we have had moments where we've gotten to break bread together. And I've gotten to actually watch you handle the food and make the food. Um, because I'll talk about that later. I now cook and make food in ways that you do. And, um, that has been like one of the biggest changes is being able to cook for myself in ways that feel really good. And that is a direct result of you. So, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to dive into it because you're going to you're going to bring me back to a lot of things I may have forgotten. Heck yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Breaking bread. It's an important human experience. And yeah, some of the social stuff can be that some of the hardest, but also the most juiciest. Yeah. And let me, if you can wind back to before you reached out to me for hiring me to be your food coach, where were you at? What was going on with you? Why were you thinking about it? I have a bunch more questions, but I'll start with there. For sure. Yeah. So you saying, you know, like breaking bet breaking bread is one of the most important things that we do. Um, if I look back over my life, that is like a source of pain that I didn't realize I had in my life because it was not a space of really like enjoying and community. Um, so we'll dive into that later, but where I was at, when I started with you, I knew I had issues around food coming off of my divorce. That was kind of the first time that I really acknowledged to myself. I had lost a lot of weight, probably a good 20, 15 pounds going through the divorce with the stress of it. And I had started working with a personal trainer about two years before I worked with you in the hopes to gain weight and to get stronger, um, which I had, I'd made some incredible progress there. 
Um, but ultimately went through a stressful period a few months before I met you, before I decided to coach with you and had lost all of those gains had gone back into a very stressed, very restrictive. When I get stressed, I just don't eat at all. And this time around, I still had my trainer and I could not fix the food piece. And she kept emphasizing, like, if you don't give me bricks, I can't build. So I wasn't eating and you can't build muscle without fueling the body. And I knew I could not figure this out on my own. Um, I did not go looking for any other coaches because this was a space that I like did not want to work on kind of, um, it's a space I had a lot of like hidden shame around. So I remember when I came to you, it was kind of like, I kind of need your help. I don't really know even what I'm needing, but here's my symptoms. I can't seem to get myself to eat and I'm embarrassed about it. Do you remember that? I was kind of just like, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember where I was sitting when we had this, that first conversation about potentially coaching together. And one of the other things I remember from that conversation, and I do really appreciate your trust in being vulnerable in that space with me. It means so much to me. And one of the other pieces that I really remember from that first call where we were considering um, coaching together in this container was you had like done a really restrictive kind of gut reset before, and you mm -hmm. kind of had these like a whole really long list of allergies. And you were like, I think I have to do all of this restriction and all of this stuff. Like, and I remember that conversation and sharing with you, like, I don't think we have to do this like massive restriction. I think we can find a way to tune into your body and listen and nourish that um, doesn't have this, you know, like long list of no's and this restrictive piece. Do you want to share anything more with that? Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm in the Dead Sea floating in the water. Go ahead and like and share and follow so we can keep in touch. Yeah. Just thinking back to that, like. I was so, um, I think the word would just be like frantic, I think around. And so just like throwing darts at a wall, hoping it would hit something kind of thing, like no real direction on how I was going to do this. Um, other than like, yeah, I tried a random candida diet at one point that had seemed to really work for me in like cleaning up my gut health. So I knew I probably, I was having a lot of like brain fog and fatigue and not being able to stay awake. And at 35, I was like, this is not normal. But the overwhelm of like, I have no idea where to start. And then all of that food testing had come about through a different venue, but it was super discouraging because it was like all the main foods I depended on they were saying I was allergic to, and I was already struggling to eat. So the normal foods I've been eating, they're now saying are making me sick. I was just like, you know, I'm drowning. And on that call, you being like, I think there's a different way. I think I just remember this huge, like relief in my body of, I don't have to figure this out alone. I'm no longer, I was in a lot of just like emotional, physical pain. And that is one of the hardest places to do something this big out of, because you're not thinking clearly, you're kind of desperate. Um, so you saying that was like, okay, take my hand. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I will take your hand. Please help me. <laughs> yeah. I remember one of the other words that really stuck with you in that call was the word nourishing. I remember you just being like, yes, that's what I want. And I would love if you would kind of share, cause you know, food changes or just even like, just looking at our health can, can, and is very often just super overwhelming and feels really big. And so I'd love for you to talk to that piece of like that kind of preconception before coaching. And then like what my program was like and, and how it compared to that overwhelming big feeling. Oh, for sure. I think why I stayed away from working with anybody in food. Cause you had talked to me, you like, we were friends before this and you had been like, you know, I'm a food coach. Right. And I'd be like, mm, because I didn't want the overwhelm, the overwhelm of what felt like changing everything. And 
And really, as we got into it, what I didn't want was to have to feel those feelings of my broken relationship with food, which was the trauma of, you know, being raised in a family where my mom had, I would definitely say like mental disorders, depression, and food was not a safe space. And I just hadn't realized how much that had carried up into adulthood. So no, I didn't want to go work on this with anybody. I didn't want somebody to come in and add more stuff to my plate. Remember that was my, I was really dealing with a lot of like frustration at having to deal with stuff that I felt like shouldn't be mine, you know, stuff that came about from my trauma. So, and I'm already a very like complex. I run my own business. I am a single mom of three boys I was not looking for more to add to my plate. And what I loved so much about coaching with you. And I mean, with me, I didn't even take like the full advantage. You remember, like I was somebody who struggled, like watching the videos and, and like actually doing you, I mean, your curriculum's incredible. I didn't even take advantage of all of that. And still just you coaching me and teaching me these fundamental pieces that you did throughout the program, which is what I needed. I needed something kind of pared down and just hard hitting on those things that mattered most, which were the emotional processing, helping me get to the root problem, and then giving me like real tools and real recipes and foods that I could use was magic. I mean, I remember starting with you thinking like, yeah, yeah, maybe we'll like change things around. Hopefully. (laughs) I mean, I didn't doubt your coaching. I doubted what could actually be done around food and me because it had been a problem for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That was a, that was a good piece. Um, I'm curious, like if you're open to touching on kind of where you were at There was a piece um, that one of the first cornerstone pieces, at least in my perspective of our journey together was around um, your relationship with your body and, and, and nourishing yourself. And then um, if you would also connect it to kind of where you got to like four months into the program and that kind of where your relationship with nourishing yourself and your relationship to your body shifted towards, would you share a little bit about that before and after? Yeah, definitely. And I think this is like the biggest reason I would recommend you as a coach around food issues, because food issues aren't just about food. They are about much deeper things. And for me, that's what it was. And that was why I had fought really working with someone for so long. And I think pretty much out of the gate with you, we identified like first or second session. Um, I just wasn't bought into the idea of nourishing my body and you helped dig down into why that was. And it came from that trauma in my childhood and like a self-rejection. So of course I'm going to starve and not feed my body when I don't love myself. And that was something I did not know was there. Like if you had told me like, you're not eating because you have this deeper root piece that's something you have to have a very special coach to walk you down that road and make you feel safe enough to see that. And you were that person for me. And I think that's why I was never willing to work with anybody else. Cause a part of me probably knew it's going to be more emotional than just, you need to eat more grains and legumes (laughs) or, you know, um, so I would say, you know, we, we started out there, which talk about a tough client, right? You started out with me. I was basically like, I don't, I would vacillate. This was my trauma coming up with like, I don't even know if I want to live. I don't know if I want to feed myself. Right. Which is wild because I am this, like I said, super high functioning on the outside. Like it all looks good. But when we got into the deeper relationship with food, we were finding like massive fissures in my psyche, lots of pain that had not ever been unveiled, examined, um, had space held for. So we started out there with like, I don't even know if I want a body much less if I want to nourish it. And you just held me so gently in that space. 
and built that trust with me through that like first month. And then if I recall, then we could kind of start playing with like, okay, now that we want to be here, now that we've like, we do want to maybe love our body. What could that look like in a non restrictive, let's just take all the things away. And one of the biggest pieces you started teaching me was about body knowing. And I am still to this day, like that is my favorite thing that you taught me, which is this deep, intimate relationship with knowing how food feels when you're ingesting it, when you're tasting it, how it's um, affecting your body afterwards. Looking back, I was so detached from my body. I could put food in and not realize an hour later that like, that's what was causing all of the fatigue and the brain fog. Or I could be making foods that I, you know, my brain was thinking like, yay, we want to eat this. But I wasn't picking up that my body's like, no, we don't want this. So I'd say the next like two to three months were that work of you slowly, gradually, like introducing me to a new recipe here, or maybe we try this here, or what are you noticing here? And me building up that awareness, healing that relationship with my body, um, until, you know, kind of towards the end points of us coaching, we started to really refine and drop into this space that I feel like I'm in now, which is this like empowered. I, I don't have the shame I had around food. In fact, I have like self-esteem now around food because I've done the work to have a better relationship with it. And now I can enjoy it more fully. I feel more confident in the kitchen. I have like my go-to recipes from you that I keep on stock And, you know, that's like such an incredible change from, I don't know if I want to be here, much less nourish my body to, yeah, I'm here. Food is a gift that I give my body. It's how I nourish it. And I have the education to be able to know what it wants and to give it that. (laughs) That was a lot of good stuff you just shared there. Yes. (laughs) You, you mentioned briefly about, um, I think you said your brain cravings, would you touch a little bit on the journey? I mean, it's like one of the big things that we work on is like noticing where different cravings come from. Would you talk a little bit about kind of your before cravings and your now cravings? Yeah. So I would say my, my before cravings were probably more of like a buffering, like using food to escape my body, which sounds weird, but, um, cause I remember, remember I went through like a period of like, and you were so good about helping me notice the cravings, like stuff I was wanting to eat over and over and over. Like it was like chips and sour cream, chips and sour cream or, (laughs) or, um, and doing it in a non like shameful or judgmental way, just like, Oh, that's really interesting. Like, why do you think it's doing that? And how do you, how are you feeling after you're eating it? Um, So contrasting that with when you introduced me to your bone broth recipe, which was one of the biggest pieces of my healing journey, because when I first started making that bone broth, I was like, whoa, this is a different type of craving. This is like a, my body knows there are nutrients and vitamins and things that I am missing that are in this. And it is like, yes, please more of that. And seriously, if you remember, like you introduced that to me, probably like second month, that was what I kind of lived off of for a while. If it was just like, if I can just have bone broth, I took bone broth with me to burning man, <laughs> like, which is no easy feat guys. We're not talking about like canned bone broth. We're talking like I had, you know, powders and miso and ghee all in these different containers that I would go have to find, you know, hot water to boil and combine all of them every morning. Um, but that was the first time I understood craving from a body knowing like, this is good for me. I want it space. And now I definitely like craving isn't a bad word anymore. I, from the work we've done, I really don't crave 
foods. Um, I can actually like feel it in my body. The like, oof, that is just like, um, like an addictive kind of craving, like bliss, um, overstimulating my receptors too much kind of thing. And, um, I've found alternatives through, you know, your homemade chocolate recipe. Like I have that at home. I always keep that in my fridge. So I have my yummy alternatives that I get to enjoy that like my body really does crave in good ways rather than the, I need to escape. I'm going to go use food kind of way. Yeah. Cravings can be fun. (laughs) And nourishing. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And leave us feeling better. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 I love that comment. Um, you're, you're, I, I so appreciate how articulate and beautiful you say things. I'm just like mesmerized by the way you describe things. I just love this about you, Britta. Thank um, you. I'm curious to switch modes slightly and you're welcome to bring up anything that you feel is kind of, um, that we didn't quite finish, but I'm, I'm curious if you would share how, how this, your food changes have affected potentially other areas of your life. Like what's, what's like the current, like the greater impact. Oh yeah. Huge. Like, so I would say body knowing through food is incredible for, um, just overall being able to like be in your body, feeling present, allowing, uh, which filters into everything that filters into my relationship with my children that filters into my relationship with my clients and my relationship with my romantic partner. Um, it allows me a much more grounded, full experience. And I think one of the like most, um, what would the word be? Like you kind of like found this cool way to do it through food. Like it kind of like hijacks because food forces you to be in the body if you'll let it. And that's when you would like have me sit and eat and not do anything else. Remember in the beginning, you're like, I just want you to eat your food and taste it. And that was so hard for me. I hadn't realized how much I would be watching something or talking to someone or listening to something when I was eating. Um, so if you'll let it, food is this like magic gateway that can bring you to just deeper resonance with your entire life um, that filters out into all those other places. I would also say, you know, something that I really take a lot of joy in now is we're still introducing it. You and I've talked about this, still introducing it gradually, like to my kids, right? My kids tend to be a little bit like, Oh mom, you're always like wanting to eat good food now. (laughs) So a little bit more in my life of like, by example, than rather, you know, just gently, gently sharing it with them. Um, but I've really loved that with my romantic partner, we we're now in the kitchen together and it feels so good to make food for us. And I, you know, I always think so much of the salads that you made when we were together, where you always have like olive oil, tahini and balsamic, and you always throw in like all sorts of other stuff, but like those three things, I put those on like everything now. And those are my like craves that feel so good when I eat my food. So an element that's really grown for me is that feeling of confidence and love of being in the kitchen and being able to make something taste really good for myself. Something that sucked big time before I met you was how much like food did not taste good or, um, you know, maybe if I went out to a restaurant and I was getting something like really, you know, made by a chef or then it would taste good, but stuff made at home often was like dry or bland or just not engaging to my body knowing. Didn't know that at the time, but I know that now. Um, so I'd say that's another really big, like other part of my life that's been influenced is just like my self-confidence around food. Um, (laughs) yeah, I see your face. Like, you know, that's a big deal for me to not live with like the perpetual shame. I mean, I think you'll, I know you remember I had moments of like going to the, I would have like daily shame of going to the fridge and feeling like 
there's nothing for me to eat. And just the overwhelm of standing in front of the fridge and not knowing what I was going to eat. And you gently helping me get to the space now where I stand in front of the fridge and I say, you know, there may be something in here for me to, to make or to eat. And I will, I continue to like amaze myself how I can whip out these incredible breakfasts now where I'm just pulling together all these different pieces. And by the time, you know, my partner and I put it on the table, it's like, oh my God, look at me. (laughs) And then we get to sit and we enjoy this beautiful meal with all these different pieces. And that comes because I'm making it from the body knowing, right? I'm like, okay, so, you know, we're going to do these eggs, but we're going to add in this rice and veggies from last night. And then, Ooh, let's like cut up some mango. And I've got my, but you know, cashew butter muffins recipe from Chandra. Like I've got some of those and Ooh, let's put cottage cheese on top of those eggs with the balsamic and put some sprouts on top. Like food now is this beautiful, uh, like creative endeavor for me where previously I was very like, I just have to eat. I'm not eating and I have to eat and I need some bricks for my personal trainer. So put some bricks in my body. Yeah. Would you share, I love the kitchen confidence. I think I'm totally going to steal that phrase. It's awesome. Um, Would you share a little bit? Because one of the biggest obstacles that people feel around food changes is like, oh, it's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to have to be in the kitchen a whole lot. And so I'm curious if you would just kind of touch a little bit on like, what's kind of your average now daily time of how much you actually spend in the kitchen preparing these like nourishing, tasty meals for yourself and partner. Um, so quantitatively, I mean, like 30 minutes, I can get a meal that's, you know, that's tossing like some rice in an instant pot and then frying up some vegetables. And I've already got, you know, like a protein thawed. But even beyond like the the time, I think what's so nice about it is it's that like you're cooking with body knowing. So especially like one of my favorite meals to make is breakfast because it's not like I really need to have like a heavy, like big entree. So I have these like key pieces now, things to you, I would say of like knowing these elements. It's more about like knowing these elements that my body craves that if I use them, I will like the meal. So it's that olive oil, tahini, um, balsamic vinegar combo. Like I can toss that on pretty much everything. Um, and then I started making like this really simple buckwheat bread. So this was the piece of like getting rid of processed foods that actually don't make me feel good and finding those like core recipes that are my go-tos. One of them for me is the buckwheat bread. I love being able to slice up a couple slices of that and just have it around. And if you told me like, oh, you're going to be making bread before we started, I would have been like, yeah, no, I don't have time for that. What are you talking about? But when you start feeling that craving for like how, and it's not the bad craving, it's the like, oh my God, this is so yummy and nourishing for my body. I love making my buckwheat bread. It takes a little bit more time out of my life, but the dividends of getting to enjoy it and getting to feel good about giving my body what it needs makes it so worth it. Plus, I think I, I'm just, I cook differently in the kitchen now. I don't know how to describe it as much as I'm, um, I'm not as like, oh, I have to make this recipe and it has to look this way as much as I'm more versatile in like what's in the fridge. What is my body feeling drawn to? Ooh, sweet potatoes sound really good. Let's cook up some of those. And also seeing you, you know, we, we went on, we went to Burning Man together and then we went on these, um, we had a trip together where I came out and saw you. I realized too, like my body doesn't want like all this different food. Like there's, there's a variety and there's like my key varieties. And then I just kind of mix those up. So I really don't need a ton of different recipes and a ton of different foods as much as I have like my key things that I've seen you make or that I've made or your recipes. 
that through working with you have now become like my go-tos and crazy enough. I don't know. Maybe you, this is a question I have for you. Like, I don't seem to get tired of those foods. Like I used to, like I used to burn out on recipes, the stuff that I cook with now, like I still crave it. I still want, um, arugula (laughs) with the olive oil and the balsamic. I still want my sprouts every week. I still want my buckwheat. It's wild. What is that? Yeah. I find it's been like a few months since we finished coaching. Um, and I would say like, there is some kind of like seasonal patterns. Like I'll notice like different cravings in different seasons, like, you know, Mm -hmm. soups are more often craving. So I, there, I would say there's like kind of a natural shift through the seasons. And then, you know, every once in a while you get like a really new, a new recipe that like, you know, lands and so, but yeah, I would say like the foundational pieces, it's kind of like, which I really appreciate because for me, food is not like my, my main way to create these days. And so for me, I really love having just like basic things that I know fuel me and that I can then just, you know, create without spending all of the creative energy, which I think is a lot of how you landed with your food relationship is like, you know, got a lot of other things to create and the food is like, Hey, let's just fuel with some really good high vibe foods, but yeah, they'll, they'll shift a little bit, but I think the foundation will be pretty, pretty similar for. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I think the other thing too, that was huge was you teaching me like your homemade mayo recipe, the confidence to like, Oh, I, because that is something I love. I like sauces. I like things we've realized I'm kind of, I think you said more of like a, what is that Ayurvedic? Yeah. More of a Vata. So I like like a lot of liquid on my foods. (laughs) So being able to make my own homemade Mayo, which is so much easier and does not have all the preservatives. Like just last weekend with my partner, I was like, we've realized we are not eating out as much because when we eat out, we kind of have upset stomachs and that's just we got to a point where it's like being bloated and feeling gross afterwards kind of ruins the evening. So I was like, okay, it's time to start like finding some new recipes. So I found one for like Greek food basically. And it had like a homemade tzatziki and hummus and we made it together. Um, and it was, it's actually super easy and it was really fun. And it was so nice to eat that meal, feel really good eating it. And afterwards be able to enjoy the rest of the evening, feeling great together. Um, so I, I think that confidence to like, I can make stuff at home. I don't have to, and, and just noticing, right. The two of us, like we kept going out to these restaurants around town and slowly, like each one kept dropping off the list because we'd go, we'd eat and we'd feel like, Ooh, it tastes yummy. And then we'd go home and feel sick and it'd be like, okay, we can't go back there until we only had like one or two. And so it's like, okay, we can cook from home. That's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a blessing and a curse. There's kind of no going back once you, once we get to really feel how good it feels to feel good after a meal instead of sluggish, then it becomes this kind of like conscious choice of like, well, I just know how I want to feel. And then a lot of restaurants drop off, which is a little bit sad for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, and the nice thing is like, you know, we occasionally, you find the ones that do work, but I will tell you, I used to be bloated all the time. Like I didn't understand how that felt because it was my norm. So now I will like to live unbloated is so much better than eating food that does not sit well, that my body can't even digest. Like, yeah, Yeah. it's, it's now instead of the norm, it's like the irregular moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I know. (laughs) Yeah, it's, I get, I get so happy and excited. Like when, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a powerful place to shift to. It's really powerful. Yeah. Yay. What, um, is there anything else you want to add? Um, I mean, I think just like the biggest piece that I like why I guess if I was wanting to, you know, say to someone like why I would recommend working with you is you were willing to not just rush me into like checklists and you were willing to slow down and really help me feel 
through those things at the beginning, which, you know, when you asked like, how did our work together influence the rest of my life? That was huge. Um, food is fundamental to our experience as humans. And that is something I really took for granted because it was not a big deal in my family of origin. It was like chips and cheese and milkshakes and, you know, just there was no real understanding. I, there was no education around food. Um, and you took the time to kind of like reparent and love me through healing that part enough to be willing to step up into that role of, of guiding me and teaching me. And then ultimately like giving me the baton for being able to do that for myself. And that I don't believe is something that most, there are lots of coaches out there, lots of people working on food that will give you tips and actions and things to do, uh, that will ultimately just be a bunch of like treating your symptoms without actually finding that root of why is food an issue for you? And it, you didn't even start with that. It's not like you came to me and were like, let's find this deep issue. It just unveiled itself. And instead of you running from that or not being able to hold space for that, you did. And I know for me, that's what got me the ability to over the next like preceding three, four months, really get the changes that I wanted, um, to get shifts that I didn't even know were possible. Like I did not know this is where we were headed. I just hoped I could eat some more food, <laughs> gain some more weight. I knew, you know, in my head I, and you even helped me examine that. Like, why do you want that? So you're an incredible coach for actually finding the deeper things, asking the deeper whys and doing the deeper work instead of just here's, you know, four months of, yeah, lots and lots of education and materials and like doing things that ultimately isn't going to stick long-term. I wanted something that was going to last the rest of my life. And I see that, like, I use the things you taught me every single day now. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I want to convey my deep love and gratitude because you know, when I started with you, that was not what I thought we were going to be doing. I, I really underestimated what you could do with me. And I can, if I can add in there also what you were capable of. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You I, I know. I know. We, you surprised me. <laughs> I surprised you. I surprised myself. <laughs> I believed in you. I definitely believed in you. You did. You believed yeah. in me more than I did. I started and was very, yeah, I was kind of all over the place in the beginning. Very like, I want this, but I don't want this, but I, ah. Yeah. It was such a treat and delight to work with you because you're already this very self-aware person that's, you know, got all of these things going. And I was like, this is like going to be easy peasy. All we got to do is transfer this, you know, awareness and magic into this, this piece. And it was just a, an utter delight to, to be on your journey and, you know, be, let me hold space for you in that way. And, and yeah, and I really do appreciate you mentioning the relationship piece because it's, yeah, it is the foundational piece to really making those sustainable food changes without getting ourselves on board and, and, you know, as you said, get to the root cause and really understand the beliefs and the emotions without that piece. It's just a bunch of checklists, you know, that, that don't last. So I really appreciate you articulating that so beautifully. Of course. It's huge. Okay. I'm feeling like we're, that was an incredible gift. <laughs> Any, I, any, any last words? <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, if anybody is doing kind of what I was doing of like, it was like a fringe kind of like, I knew it was a big deal, but I didn't want to admit to myself what a big deal it was. I had a lot of shame, a lot of fear. Um, I look back over those months that we worked together and I think like, oh my God, my life is so much better now. And I would not have guessed that we could make that much of like, you know, I thought 
we kind of over us, like we were so afraid of how much work it's going to take that we're like, Ooh, I'm not going to do it at all. And I look back and I'm like, no, that was absolutely like, yes, we dug deep. Yes. We worked hard, but the payout and the dividends from it now of getting to live daily with myself without constant shame. Every time I go to the fridge, which is multiple times a day or constant, like, um, just self doubt and self-hatred around food that I didn't even realize was happening to live without that is everything. So it is worth it to invest, to make the changes, um, to really get to have that confidence going forward around food and not just confidence, but like enjoyment. Yeah. So thank you. It's worth it. Wow. Thank you so much, Britta. I really, really, yeah. really appreciate this, your time and your brain space and your articulation and your, yeah, just sharing your truth and your story and your journey. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I love you. Ah, I love you too. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Deal. Thank you. Of course. Thank you.